Hello, welcome back. Last time I did Signal Averager and had a real good time with it. I didn't learn a whole lot of new stuff, but just sort of refined a lot of techniques that I'd built up over the course of playing earlier puzzles. Some of these upcoming puzzles have some pretty scary names. So there will be some real interesting stuff coming up, I can tell. Alright, so today I'm going to go ahead and take a detour and analyze the programs that I was sent for... Um, Let's see, Sequence Sorter had one, Nalepsy or something. Um, I had to learn a few things about pronunciation in the Czech language. This was sent to me by Jan Sharoch, I believe is how the name would be said. <laughs> Sorry if I got that wrong, that's the best I can do. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to let this complete all the way because I feel like it would like wreck my statistics here. I don't want to submit a score that's not my own, but I'll at least run it uh, through like the first two uh, test sets or something, and then stop it. Anyway, so I don't know what this word means. Uh, it's not in my language, but let's learn how this works. So hang on. First, let me just look at how my program for this worked. It used up almost all of the instruction space available. This is blank, but and this doesn't have much, but all these are quite, quite full. All right, so let's pick apart Nalepsy. So you take your input, sequence is zero, terminated, read, sort, write it out. So take a th so just skip over this node, do logic here. All right. Uh, Jez this. All right, so if you get a zero, an end of sequence, then you go to this and move whatever's in your accumulator to the right node. Let's uh, actually just run this real quick and just sort of watch it work a little bit. I see things going in here. Some things are going in here. It's obviously working and is pretty fast. Um, what's going to be the best way to do this? Let's uh, let's step. I don't know. I haven't had to read someone else's code and pick it apart in this language yet. So you want to read from right. You've started by initializing this with a zero. You've started by initializing this with your register, which is a zero. Okay, so kind of similar start to mine. I feel like the flow of this is a lot like what I did. So you just swap, which doesn't really mean anything right now. Uh, all right, so you have a non-zero, so you have a 27. You're going to save that. Pull out this zero and move it there. Interesting. Okay, then you want to read a value and subtract from what you read there. If this is a non-zero, which is not, uh, if this is less than zero, which it's not, then do something. Uh, so you're going to add 100. Right, so there's a bunch of like weird arithmetic like this. Adding large numbers, these are all, all two-digit numbers. So I guess you're like encoding some more information into that. Because like this doesn't use all of the bits of information, basically, or decimal digits. Move ACK right. Without bit-shifting operators, uh, it almost like doesn't matter what the number base is here. In, in some sense. It's kind of like this is almost a decimal computer, which is very unusual. Okay, so you're, you add a 100 to the value if it is 0. I feel like you could save an instruction here by just... Well, no, hop probably does something... No, okay, no. What? <laughs> This program's way more optimized than what I wrote. What am I doing giving optimization tips here? I mean, I, I was giving that one incorrectly. So you subtract left from this and get negative 33. You want to write your 100 again over here. It is less than zero. Oh, I see how it is. I think. Move left nil, so you discard this value. Swap negate. You're restarting. 
What? Okay, so you're gonna get you're gonna go to VR. Move act right. So you have a negated value in you right now. You're gonna swap sub 100 from negative one. It is not equal to zero. Move right nail. So you wanna discard whatever you get. I'm not sure I get what's going on here. So you get a negative value. It's not greater than zero. It is less than zero, so you get a this. Negate it, sure. Move it down. What was up with this negation? Hmm. So hang on, who, who negated? Yeah, this negated that, then moved it right which also negated it. I don't understand why these are done. Although I guess, okay, no, this is again just using like the sign bit to encode extra information here. I see, oh cool, okay. So you get a value, fascinating, yeah, because it's negative you can take a different conditional path, but still preserve the numeric information there by negating again. Oh, nice, I'm gonna use this technique. I like this. That's a good one. Okay, I learned something. Uh, so you negate it again to pull the information back out. Move it down. Then you read from up. You are checking to see what you got. You're gonna to go to VR, which is here, and just stick it over there, and wait for something from you. So you pull out that zero, and move it down here. Then you're reading that zero. Just... So you just stop when you get a zero, sure. So that pulls whatever's out of here, gives it to this. Yeah, so that just shuffles things from here back to there and then terminates when it gets a zero. Okay, yeah, pretty much just like mine did. Yeah, so you were trying to write that zero. Now you're back here. Why did you... Okay, right, so you were... You moved the zero left... Where does it sort? It must, I think the sorting logic is like in here. All right, so we'll get to see what happens with the 27 here. So you pull out the 67 and put it there. Then you want to subtract a value from there. Okay. So it's greater than zero. So this time you got not a zero, so you have a 67, hop, move, act, right. So you spit it back over here again. You're subtracting 67 from 27, oh, oh. This is like a lot of logic all intermingled. This is pretty impressive. So it's less than zero. So you discard the second 67 that's written, swap the 27 in, negate it, tell you, what are you telling it? What does negative zero, uh, neg negative zero, negative one mean? VR, swap sub 100, jez hop two, add 100, move back down, move up right, oh, this inserts stuff too, I see. Uh, okay. Hang on, there's a lot of stuff going on here. You're going to... 
you're here because you've just gotten a negative one, which means you're moving a negative one here, what? Sub 100, jez hop two, add 100, move act down, move up right. You're gonna write a negative one to this stack, I think. Okay, so you have a negative 27. Now you have a positive 27 and you're inserting it in here, sure. No, wait, 67. What? You totally had a negative one. What happened here? Hold on. Oh, hold on. No, what happened here? Something I didn't understand. Negative one to left. JLZ VR. Oh, VR has a swap. You swapped. Okay, I was looking at that all wrong. Of course. Okay. Okay. So at some point you can end up with exactly 100 in there and it does something with hop two. For some reason. Okay. Uh, so right, 27's going down there. 67's coming in here. What's the timing? 67 makes it first. Then 27 goes in. Okay. 86 wants to come in. Uh, I just stepped through instructions without really watching what they were doing. Um, who's doing what now? Everybody's waiting on you. You just had a zero, so you're... Reading the zero out of there, you're reinitializing that. Okay, so 86. Move down left, so 27 comes over here. Then 27 gets subtracted from 86. Okay, so now you're going to get a positive number here. So you have 59, so instead of Jules VL, you finally actually take this value, don't discard it and put it over here. So the 27 goes there. Yeah, okay, so this is then going to send the 86, move left, right, swap, jump up, save. Oh, you're still holding on to 86 and moving on with that. Okay, so like I can kind of sort of intuitively see how this works, but to pick it all the way apart and be able to fluently explain what's happening here, I don't think is going to happen. Um, but it's cool to see this working. So this sort of holds on to the value that wants to be inserted lets other values flow around it until it's time for this to go in, then sends it over here. But then there's like two simultaneous insertions happening from the left and the right. Timed together so that, uh, so that this one goes in first. What's this storage used for exactly? When do you move stuff up? You move zero up, then you move ack up in Dull and is greater than zero. Right, that 27 was pulled out of here, compared, and then stuck there. Yeah, so this is temporary storage while you're working on finding a home for the 86. Then you'll put the 27 back in until you've decided which of 86 and 67 need to go in here first. Yeah, and just refill that, and once you get a zero, just this, move back right, move right nil, okay, so you'll get a zero, 
which means you move a negative one down, move the down left. Uh, so you get to this, I'll interpret that as like finish. Uh, move left act, move act down, Jin's vis. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So once the negative one uh, to the left, no, once the zero goes over here, then a negative one goes down here, and that's your signal to empty this, dump it to out, and then, yeah, then just restart. Oh, wow, okay. So... Yeah, fundamentally very similar to my algorithm, I think, just with fewer steps in between and some really clever overloading between, like, what it does with the subtraction and these values here. Okay, neat. So that's as much picking a part of that as I'm going to do. Let me just look at mine and see if this does look similar. It does some different signaling. Oh boy, I don't want to pick this apart again. <laughs> I wrote it, but there's, like, way more code here. Yeah, this is like a signal interpreter that does weird stuff with this. But still, fundamentally, this is the same algorithm, just implemented more clumsily. I think this is the same. Hmm. Okay, uh, well, that was fun. Um, let me only do one of those today. I'll pick apart some others later. I want to write some code. So let's go to submaximum selector. Read from in.a through in.d, write second largest value to out. Okay, so based on the name, I figured this would be like zero terminated sequences. Write the second largest value from that, but no, it's, it's parallelism. Okay, so not the largest, but the second largest. Okay. So, uh, right, people have things to say. You know the internet, right? Don't patronize me. I'm a physicist. Sorry, the internet? I haven't heard of it. Is that a research project you have in Denmark? No, it's like... Like what? Wait a moment. Hmm. Jake S. Okay. Uh, in.a through in.d, second largest value to out. Okay. Um, let's come up with a plan here. All right, so obviously I have to compare values. And I have four values to compare. Um, so, you know, just thinking like in terms of approaches to this, I could sort the four and discard the f top one, write the second one, discard the third and fourth. Uh, I don't want to implement sorting, so let's do something simpler. I... Let's say, what would I do if I just wanted the maximum? Let's start there and then work to the sub-maximum from that. So I need to read them all, have them compare. Okay, um, starting to think that like, what if these two nodes talked to each other and determined which one of theirs was greater? Then these two talk to each other and determine which one of theirs is greater. Uh, yeah, then I'd have these propagate onto here, take the maximum from both of those, have these talk to each other and determine which one is greater, then pass that one to out. So that's how I would do maximum. Right, that's a simple way to think about that. But for sub-maximum... Like, just logically, that doesn't work the same. Like, even if I did that, um, I could have the second largest here and the largest here. So, like, I would lose the second largest value there. Um, well, so if I took the smaller of the two values then I still have the potential to lose information. No, I have to examine all four. I can't, like, examine two in isolation, then decide w whether to discard one. I need the full information in order to know what to discard and what not to. So I could... Uh, let's see. 
Actually, this is tricky to think about. So this is like, I, I don't think the implementation for this is going to be bad. I just need to logic out, like, what is the algorithm e even going to be? Like, <laughs> write second largest value to out is easier to write in these words, but like in the words that this computer understands. Uh... Obviously, I only have one, well, one and a half registers, sort of. So I can't work with too many values all at once. What if I determined which one is largest, discarded that, then determined which one is largest out of the remaining three and passed that on? That sounds reasonable. So the remaining three would need to continue then. So I think I'm going to need a central authority. Someone to be the arbiter of, like, I know who has the largest value, so I will tell them what to do, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like there are a lot of ways to do it. That one will probably work and will probably not be super efficient, but it'll probably work. So let's say, I think for convenience, you can probably be the arbiter, maybe. Let's pretend you can be. So, um, so you're gonna read this value. Uh, let's just be really node inefficient. So I'm going to compare these two. Um, so obviously I can't just like discard these values. So let's go ahead and just do that now. Uh, so if you are greater than zero, then... Um, D is greater, except that's false. Uh, D is lesser, okay? So let's do this. Um, less than or equal to. Uh, so if D is greater, then I want to, well, now hang on. If I can only really do one test at a time, I don't really care that D is greater. There's no stack memory nodes here. So, right, storage for all of these things. Um, having a new idea. Man, I almost do need to just, like, sort these values. How do I... All right, I need a plan here. Uh, I'm not speaking fluently about what I want to do because I don't know what I want to do. So let me get, get that clear in my head before I move on. All right, so I thought about it. I think I have kind of an idea of a general flow of this. This is not going to be efficient on instruction count, but it might be okay on cycle count. So I'm thinking each one of these is going to compute. Like, A will examine the value of A minus B, a minus C and A minus D. B will examine B minus A, B minus C, B minus D, and so on. Each one will have three different comparisons between itself minus all of its neighbors. Whichever one of those comes up with a zero or greater value... No, that's not right. Multiple ones could do that. Okay, never mind. So I'm wondering about assumptions I can make about this data set. Will I ever get two or more numbers that are the same in it? If I could assume that to be false, then I might be able to take some shortcuts here. Zero exists. These all appear to be positive numbers. Uh, if you really wanted to jam up um, an algorithm for this, then give all four of the same number. 
Uh, I mean, technically that's not incorrect by the way this is phrased. I feel like I should write my program to handle that case. But just sort of glancing through this data, it's not that easy to pick up, but I don't immediately spot anything that, w any uh, repeated values on the same row. There's one, found it, okay. Uh, yes, and one of those is in fact the sub-maximum. So in this row, you want to pass on 69, but there's also another 69. Are there ever two that are... I mean, no, I should just assume that it can be literally anything. So you could totally have, you know, four zeros, for example. Um, okay, well, let me think about this some more, I guess. All right, how about a completely different approach? Let's have these two sort each other. So sorting just two values shouldn't be too bad. Then these two sort each other. So I will know this value is greater than this one. This value is greater than this one. I don't care where they came from. I just need the sub-maximum. So then I'll pass those two. Actually, I'll just pass... Ah, shoot, this still doesn't work. Um, everybody will come down here. And no! Ah! I was trying to do some sort of thing where I could, like, stair-step it... Um, like have these sort themselves, then move on down there, then have these sort themselves a different way, like discarding the, the lowest value, then move on down here, then have these sort themselves, then just naturally you have the sub-maximum here, because by the time it gets to this row, I know I have like maximum here, minimums just discarded over here, but, but that doesn't work, because when I move this down, this lower value than this one has no knowledge about any of these. If I don't have knowledge about the other numbers, any number could be the one that I want to print to output. So no, I really do need all four to communicate. So going back to that idea I had about having each one subtract each other value from itself, I could then like test, I could either add those values up to themselves and see if it gives me something less than zero. I don't think that would tell me what I need to know. Uh, I could see if all three of those subtractions result in something that's a zero or less, at which point that node would know that it has the maximum value in it. However, again, if all four of those rows were this, all four of those columns were the same, then everybody would think they have the maximum and they'd be right. So I want to write my algorithm robust to something like that, just in case it happens, because I did detect one repetition of values in here somewhere right here. So yeah, let's just, just make it smart about that so I don't have to worry about like it popping up in a random test or a later data set or something. Ugh, this is weirdly hard to think about. All right, how about this? So uh, I just charted out what it would look like for the worst possible case if I wanted to say sort these into order. So if this was four, this was three, this was two, this was one then I, it looks like it would take five iterations to get to one, two, three, four using this algorithm. So A compares with B and swaps uh, if A is lesser. So then you get three, four. C compares with D at the same time. So this one and two swap. So you end up with three, four, one, two. Then B and C compare notes. A and D don't really do anything. They can't reach each other. So they just leave their values as they are. Uh, so then one is less than four, so you get three, one, four, two. Then A and B compare with each other and C and D compare with each other again. So the one makes it all the way to A, B gets the three, uh, the four makes it all the way to D and C gets the two, then I have to compare these again. All right, so five iterations of, well, I guess, two iterations each of edge compare and center compare. So edge compare, meaning A and B, and then C and D compare. Center compare, meaning B and C compare. So A, B, C, D, B, C, A, B, C, D, B, C, and then I can have sorted order here. Okay, so um, I'm going to guess that if I wanted to implement the, oh, and then of course, if I have sorted order, I just move C to out. Uh, I'm going to guess that I will spill over into these nodes but I can just sort of unroll that loop 
and um, do some compares. Here, let me just write, these are all gonna be slightly different. Let's write a pair of these first. Let's write one of these first. So you want to Problem is, I'll bet I can't fit five iterations of this into... Well, no, it just needs to be four. If I can fit... Let's just see what happens. I mean, I, I have an idea going here. Um, so if you are greater than you want to swap, right? So let's see. You are A. You read a value. You save it, you compare it to this value by subtracting that, and... Oh, by the way, B is going to want to do the same thing, so I'm going to have like a, an I.O. collision here. All right, that's fine. I'll take care of it. Uh, if right is greater than left, yeah, if that results in greater than zero, then you want to swap, which means... Uh, well, <laughs> I can get away with that even though that's a keyword. That's going to confuse me. Uh, that's fine though. Well, you know what? I can get away with not using the keyword. Uh, all right. So anyway, um, Two of these would just barely fit. And this is incomplete, so I think this is not going to be any good, huh? Okay. Well, I can think of a few ways around this. Hang on, so let's, let's write this out a bit more. Let's do at least one complete comparison between A and B. So you read this. You save it. Uh, I need to have this in here to be able to think about it. Uh, the problem is, in order for this to work, I would need to do all that before I do like this stuff. Uh. Am I ever... hang on, maybe I don't need to save this value. Maybe I don't need to save this value. If you just repeat your value, but how will you do that? Ah. Uh. Uh, yeah, feels to me like I can't just have these two nodes in communication doing this. I'm going to need to involve those two. Um, yeah, so I can't just have a chain like from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, and then here to here, right? Because this, this just doesn't fit in terms of instructions, right? Maybe it does. Now hang on. Let's not give up so quickly. So you want to... Right, so this is moving your value over there. I wish I could just like stick it in the, I, the, the out port, but then move on with my program and just wait for it to be consumed here when you need it. But I mean, blocking output is, is important to a lot of stuff. I cannot do a non-blocking write. It would be nice if I could, though. Uh, all right. So you send that over so that you do that. Um, See, so yeah, it's always going to be easier for the one that sends their value first. So you sub right, you sub left. Uh, 
But now, wait a minute. So one of these needs to be the controller. The other one just... Okay, now hang on. One of these is very much subordinate to the other one. So if it's going to be like... Yeah, okay. So one of these can control. They don't both have to implement the same algorithm exactly. All right. So let's say A were the controller. Well, I'm just writing out what I have already written there. Um, so what will you do if it's not greater than zero? Then both of you have... I can send a signal, I guess. Um, here, what I, what I actually want to do is um, so swap is going to mean uh, I'm having one of those days when it's just hard to think about what I want to do here. So I've saved that in there. Is that even necessary? Probably. So if you're less than zero, uh, so we'll call this keep. Well, no, it's why? Why is? Why am I? Ah, ah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just do this. So if you are swapping. Then what do you need to do? You need to communicate your value to this. It's not ack, you need to swap. And then what? Starting to question whether this algorithm was a good idea in the first place. Maybe this is a dumb way to do it. But like, the logic works, it's just that it's hard to fit. This is pretty typical for a TIS-100 program. That's, that's kind of the normal state of being. It's this amount of vertical space per node is my greatest limitation in this, uh, this language, for sure. Uh, although also having only one register I can operate on is a pretty big one too. But the, the vertical space is a larger one. So what am I doing again? So if I'm if I'm swapping these values, I need to get the thing I read from here and saved in the back buffer into your front buffer and do the opposite here. So then um, it's something like that. So again, you're the controller here. So if you're the controller, um, something like that. So you would swap that pair and then move it on down. This is not as many of these as I wanted to do at a time. Um, all right, yeah, so writing this out should help me think about it. So you move up back, save. Um, so give you the chance to subtract it. Well, this isn't right. That probably is. No, that looks all wrong. What? I'm so confused. <sighs> okay, you know what? I don't like anything about this. Why don't I serialize these parallel values? I will write in some order uh the f the low one first then the high one second 
So by serializing it that way, Dude, I don't know. I kind of hate this algorithm, and it really doesn't fit at all. Like, I wanted to write out, you know, have these negotiate, swap their values if necessary, do the same here, then have these negotiate, swap their values if necessary, then do it again over here, then do it again over here. But that's way too many instructions. Even if I spilled all the way over down here, that would not fit. Like, I could... This is one iteration of that. I don't think this program's even done. I don't think I can trim this down much. I definitely cannot fit two of these here and two of them here. Well, I guess it's the middle ones that would be overloaded because B is performing. Well, yeah, so this is why I wanted A to take control for that thing. So A would take control and use up the instruction space for that comparison because it just needs to kind of do that twice. B would let A control it, then take control for the comparison with C. Ugh. I don't know, I don't feel good about this. I'm gonna try and think up another way to do this because this just feels like a, a dead end to me right now. All right, so, um, new idea. What if I write a node and maybe I can add like more of these processors to speed it up. What if I write a thing that will take as input two numbers uh, two numbers in sequence, then spit them back out in lesser or greater order? I think this will probably involve another node as storage. Uh, Let's see what this ends up looking like. So I'm going to read something from, all right, so you will take your input from up here somewhere uh, and send the first input over here, save the second one over there, do the subtraction, do the comparison. So if left is less, uh, so hang on, so, um, uh, no, wait, so left minus right, no, right minus left <laughs> means that left is greater, so you want to send right first, if it's negative, um, RF, right first. Well, no, you don't need that, you do. All right, so it look like this. Uh, all right, this feels like it could be compacted with some swaps and stuff, but this looks fairly reasonable, right? So yeah. Read two value, read, read one value, stick it over here. Read another value, stick it right here. Subtract that value. Um, do the comparison. And you're either gonna move this one and then that one, or you're gonna move that one and then this one. Okay, looks great. So that will uh, work for that. So then that would mean that I just need to do a bunch of shuffling. All right, and let's put another one of these over here. Somehow I'm gonna have to get some information through this barrier. Ooh, idea. Um, uh, let's use the nodes like this instead and leave this free. So we'll have two processors for this. All right, so two processors here. Move up, down, move up, X, up, down, move down, up, move back, up, move 
down up. Okay, so these are my comparators. So first of all, you guys are gonna communicate your values. Okay, so you're gonna start with this. Um, uh, doesn't matter the order really. So it's, which order did I decide to write it down, uh, to, to, to write it out? So up, down, so sub, down. So the second one that comes in in the case that it's greater, hang on. Um, all right, so I send you a one and then I send you a two. So you subtract one from two you don't do this jump. The one is here, the two is here. So if I send you one, two, you send back one, two. Okay, so you send less first. All right. Um, so I've read this value and you know what? There's no reason I wouldn't just do that. Or this. Great. Okay. So this goes there. Then this does. It doesn't matter which order that happens in. It will spit it back in less greater order. Okay, cool. So now uh, we do it again with this. Um, So I compare these two. This isn't going to work, but let's see how far it gets me. So if I'm comparing this, that's less, that's greater. Okay. Um, So then I want to do these again, only this time it's that. And then I want to do, boy, this is hard to keep track of. Um, then I'd like to do this, but I get 15 instructions and that's 16 and then then I'm out. Okay. So um, instead, what if you moved through a different channel? So instead of serializing your output, you only take serial input and uh, yeah, that's fine. So you take serialized input, then you write the lesser to left and the greater to up. Sure. Uh, do I even need to serialize that then? Couldn't you just... Yeah, why don't you use all your I.O. ports? So that goes in this processes. Okay, so then I should be able to trim this down significantly, right? Okay, so this right here, if I'm not mistaken, will do the first compare and sort. Nice. I like that. Problem. Um, not necessarily. This might be fine. I'll just have to redirect this slightly. Okay, um, so this is, this is for like, it'll make sense in a second. Um, so now you need to Oof, uh, awkward. Um, 
All right, so that's just as large as when I had it the other way, but maybe that's okay. So now this is down to that many instructions. I need to do it again. With this. No, something's wrong here. Um, well, this is becoming just absolutely impossible to follow. Uh, so here, let's do this. Right, left, right down, move down right, move left, ack. Okay, and then this is number three, right? Where am I? This is number three. No, wait. That's number four at this point, right? Okay, so in iteration number one, you take this value and you put it in this port. That's your first one. In iteration number one, you take this value, put it in this port, which puts it in that port. Um, sure. Uh, then it comes back, so lesser flows to here, greater flows to here. Great. So you move down, ack, move down, ack. So both of those get that. Iteration number two. Um, since you are reading from this port, then I still have to go via this one. So I move the value that you are going to write to the left here. Uh... You have written your own value to the down, so we're comparing those two. Then the lesser value, again, flows through here. And number two, you... Oh, right, so you have to take this value that came from here, flows all the way in there, and then give the lesser value over here. So in number two, you move left to ack, you get the lesser. And then the down goes to the right, you get the greater. Ugh. What a terrible mess. This is just like all the moves. Um, but I did fit four in here. So yeah, at this point, I think these are actually done with what they need to do. Cool. So just copy this. No, no. Ooh. Ooh. No. That's quite different. Okay, no, this might be f okay. No, these this these are these are all of these are different. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so number one, um, number one for these looks the same as for those. Move up, down, move down, ack. Actually, yeah, that's the same for everybody. So everybody's number one looks like that. Oh, hold on, you don't have three and four. You need a three and four, right? And it looks just the same as one and two. Okay. So you get this, you get this. I'll bet this is hard to follow. I'm having trouble following it too. <laughs> but I think it'll make sense eventually. Uh, so your number two and number four need to look very different. So what you need is, uh, that's not going to involve this comparator. So like, these two will work at the same time, then only this one will do something. Then these two will go at the same time, then only this one will do something. Then I need some extra code in here to communicate its value 
down here. Uh, that's fine. I think in order to do that, I could do like that. <laughs> There's like 70 move commands in here and almost nothing else. <laughs> wow, this is just like all data moves and just a tiny bit of, let's see. So I have one jump, two jumps, I guess, two jumps, two JLZs, two subs, and literally the rest is just move. <laughs> and I'm not done writing my moves yet. Okay, so uh, for number two, you don't work with right. You need to work with uh, left. Move right. No, you need to move. Okay, so for number two, what do you do? I think you move ack left. Hold on. When do you ever... Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Okay, so you move ack left. So you move ack down, move right, left. That will work fine. Uh, and then move left ack. I believe because you take care of all the rest of the shuffling so that your greater value ends up in there. Okay, great. So then number four looks basically the same as number two. Yes, and then, well, I might as well just do this. Okay, how many times are you going to execute twice before you, yeah, you'll execute twice before this needs to pass through like that. Okay, well, I think this is done. Mm, I'm wrong. Okay. Why? This is very parallelized. Um... My, my only bottleneck is here, pretty much. Okay, so 81, 91, 48, 45. 81 and 91 come down. 48, 45, great. Okay. 81 goes over here. What? Okay, yeah, 81 goes over here. Why are these in a different place? Why are you... What? What? Oh, hold on, what happened? Move up, down, everybody is doing that. Move up right, move left, move left down. Move up, down. Why are these different? I wrote my things wrong. Okay, these are supposed to be identical. All right, something's still wrong. That's fine. All right, move up, down, everybody does that. This comes from there, goes there, ends up. All right, so we got that in that IO port, those in those IO ports, great. So your left goes here. Your left went here, great. Am I writing that back more than once? Yes. Okay, so, uh, right, these do appear to be doing the same thing. They should be identical now. Um, so move up, ack. So you're taking that 91 and putting it here. Great. Subtracting the 81 from the 91, uh, less than zero means do that. Greater than zero means I'm going to take that down and shove it over here. Great. So that's done. That goes back up here. Then I'm going to take this 10. Ooh, that shouldn't be. Oh, okay, so I need some saving and swapping. All right, that's fine. That's very fixable. So you have an 81. You have a 10 because I messed up, but that's okay. Then you jump back to the start. Now you want something from the left. Move right down, move act down. Ah, uh, you've deadlocked because you're reading in the wrong order. No, hang on, you needed to. Okay, that's fine. Let's just reverse the order that this reads. Okay, so you, you're the one who needs work. Uh, 
That should be the same, uh, except it's not. Uh, it does actually matter which way around this is. Okay, and also you need to, uh, see, you need to save. Sub down, or actually, why don't you just do this? Um, this will be simpler. Uh, so after the sub, well, no, no, it's easier to do it the other way. So just save, sub down, um, JLZRF. Well, um, no, I mean, this is fine. Either way, I'm going to be putting an instruction like this in here twice. Whether it's swap and save, this is more compact. Okay, so anyway, uh, you also needed... Right, I made two changes to you. I switched the order of I.O., which will work better with the way this goes. Uh, I might still have some deadlocks in here. And then I also added this value again so that I'll get the actual value back instead of a messed up one. Okay, so I think my I.O. order is just wrong here now. So this is breaking because it's deadlocking. All right. So it got through something. It gets as far as number four after having output nothing. No output has happened yet. Those have all been read. You, you hang on. Why did you read so much and do nothing? So hang on, number two. Oh, uh, you are all wrong. For one thing, there's that. That's not the only problem. Okay, so at least this looks right now. Move right down, move right down. Both of you are expecting that. Uh, because this is wrong. This is supposed to be move right left. I think one way or another. Let's assume it's like this. Maybe it's the other way around. Um, move right, left. Wait, right. Left. Move right down, move right, left. Move down, ack. Hang on, so you're on number four already. You're still sitting there on number three. Okay, something went wrong over here, which jammed you up. Boy, this tangled mess of moves I've made has turned into just a horrible mess to debug. I hate this algorithm. This is the worst I could possibly do on nodes. Not too good for instruction count. And it's really hard to read. Maybe my cycle count will at least be acceptable. I don't know yet, though. Hang on, why are you both in such a completely different place right now? I guess because, like, the comparison went a different way on the different sides. All right, so let's see those numbers come back out of you. So you move ack left. Negative three? What has happened here? Why am I adding down? I'm subbing down. Hold on. No, something's very wrong with my logic here. So here comes 45 and 48. 48 gets stuck in there. Gonna subtract it. Less than zero, yes. So you go there. Oh, I see what happened. I see what happened. I see. So I just need this to go here. Ah. Okay. So that's one problem. Not the only one, I'm fairly certain. All right, so you get 45. So 45 comes out here. Then 48 should come out there. Okay, so those things happened. You got your 45, and now you're ready for, you're going to get your 48. Now you're ready for number two. You're still finishing number one. 
So I'm waiting until you read from that. So you put your 91 in there, then you take this 45 and move it over there. Good, 91 and 45 being compared. Sounds great. Do the subtraction, do the comparison, do the add again, so 91 and 45. Good. Good. Did that make it all the way where it was supposed to? Move ack up, move down right. Okay, so 45 made it there. 91 is coming in here, great. Okay, so 81, 45, that's wrong. My sort is reversed. Okay, that's very easy to fix. I'll just change that L to a G. Um, but that has nothing to do with the deadlocks here. You're both on number three, so you should be doing independent sorting. And it'll all be fine. So you get 4581. No, wait. Wait, that was right, wasn't it? Because I was sorting those. Okay, so anyway. You are on number four. Wait, number four. Number four shouldn't be interacting. These two shouldn't be. No, they should be. Left ack. So you come on down there. So you're comparing 48 and 81. Forty-eight comes out here, eighty-one comes out there, forty-eight wants to go here. Forty-eight gets saved in that, then the eighty-one goes here, right? Which goes there, which goes here, which gets written to output. Oh, it is working. But then it deadlocks after that, so something goes wrong on the second iteration. Got it. Okay. Let's do uh, this. All right. So you're waiting for your number four to finish. 81's coming on down there, great, okay. So new row, right? Move up, down, three. A3 has made it in here, or it's, it's waiting to. 3 and 79, looks great. You take the 3, you put it in there, sounds great. Where does the deadlock happen? You're both waiting for your values to be written and that happens just fine. You are unsatisfied, you two are deadlocked, so something is wrong with the communication here. Why? Has this happened too many times or something? Does that happen at a time it's not supposed to? No, I mean, that's, that's the correct time for that. The 81 you're supposed to write out is going to come in there, and then you proceed. Move up, down. Wait, three. Okay, yeah, those are both three. Wait. Why are you here on number two? You're not done with this. Why are you on number two? This seems like a problem. You're in the wrong place. You are the one who's misaligned. You? How? Why? Okay, so hang on, so something went wrong with this. It's been sitting there for a while now. It got that far. Move up, down, move down, ack. Hold on, these guys are identical, right? Yes, and they should be. Okay, 
so you get that far. You just sit there at number two. Uh, they should not be identical. Okay, I didn't pay attention to the fact that you actually need to be very different from this. You don't do all that extra messaging. You are actually very simple. So you just move up, down, move down, ack. Move ack down. Move down. Oh yeah, you don't even have a right. What am I doing? <laughs> uh... You can just like move down nil and then continue, right? Yeah, I think you get to be very, very simple. Uh, right, that's a break point. 81, 47, there we go. Okay, I have a working implementation. Uh, it's probably not fast. It's definitely not instruction efficient. It's definitely not node efficient but that's what I did. It's made almost entirely of move commands. <laughs> oh dear. What kind of abomination have I made here? I'm not happy with this. It works. Cycle counts bad. Node counts bad. Instruction counts, eh, not the worst. Okay. <laughs> there was a significantly faster way to do this. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, there was a much slower way that some people did so I'm not absolutely at the top of cycle count but I'm pretty far up there man I was hoping that at least the cycle count would be okay I mean I think just like fundamentally this algorithm that I chose it was like the third or fourth I came up with I didn't invent something that is as good as things that other people invented like a lot of people invented something much faster but there are a lot of ways to express this program. The whole, like, yeah, the fact that I'm doing that many swaps and compares. Like, I'm doing the maximum number of comparisons and swaps and stuff uh, regardless of what I get. There might be some, like, shortcutting I can do to see, like, yeah, this this is always doing the amount of work it would do in the worst case for sorting. That's probably one reason the cycle count is high. Yeah, I just wrote this to be robust to if you get 4, 3, 2, 1 every time, you, it'll sort it just fine. Or if you get, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, it'll handle it fine. So it's a robust algorithm that doesn't make assumptions about the incoming data. But other than that, it's not great. <laughs> and it's just disgusting to look at and not any fun to debug. And this, this guy right here is my bottleneck. You're kind of overloaded. You're kind of overloaded. The rest of you could maybe share that responsibility better. Okay, well, yuck. I would love to come back and optimize this better someday. That's one, I think, that maybe the most needs optimization of anything that I've written. <laughs> Icky. Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah, so next time maybe I'll look at another um, an implementation of se sequence merger since I have two. And then try decimal decomposer. All right, I'll see you then.